Welcome to the beautiful. <laughs> that was a flop. Welcome to the beautiful city of Mombasa. As I like to call it, the land of tuk-tuks. A place with some of the friendliest people, amazing street food, and of course, lovely beaches. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to travel Mombasa on a budget. It's currently 8 a.m. And we're at the Siokimao railway station in Nairobi. So I've got my bags on me like a turtle shell, got that backpacker vibe going. <laughs> we're late. <laughs> Hurry up! <laughs> Morning. Morning, how are you? I'm good. C2016, welcome aboard. Thank you. Last passengers to get on the train. If you aren't late for your train or your flight, are you really living life on the edge? Anyway, so basically what happened was they shut down the main highways in Nairobi so there was like a lot of traffic on the other side roads that's what got us late. <sighs> well, anyways guys, I'm picking up this camera after four months of not vlogging so I might be a little bit rusty. So to get you up to speed, we are using the SGR train to get to Mombasa today and one of the things with budget travel is you have to pay for it with time. So this train trip cost 1,000 shillings but it's a six hour journey. That's fast. <laughs> <laughs> Last ones to get onto the train and last ones to get off. <laughs> and a little bit of an uncomfortable trip, but we have finally made it to Mombasa. <laughs> How to avoid them? How to avoid right. them? How much? Where do you want to go? The whole time. Come, come, come with us. How much? Come with us. Come Okay. So as usual, guys, when you get to your destination. Get a Bolt or an Uber and you'll get a really reasonable rate and we're paying 530 shillings to get to Old Town. Oh my gosh, it's super hot. <laughs> Alright guys, so we've made our way to Old Town Mombasa and we're going to be staying at this place called Tulia Backpacker in Old Town itself and you guys have to see this view. Oh my god. This is gonna be my travel crew for the next week. That's Deepak. Hi. And that is Jasper. Welcome. So this here is our room. Two bunk beds and a main bed, which I call dip zone. And that's basically it. And this room itself costs 5,500 shillings for the three of us. So divide by three, that's like my math sucks. I think 1250, which is so reasonable, especially when you have a view like that right outside your bedroom wow so just about just 20 meters away from the hostel there's this place called Forodani restaurant and I talked about it in one of my last videos this place is amazing and one of my favorite things about this place is that view though. so this here is the reason why we've come here this is called chicken birani some of the best in Mombasa at only 450 shillings I ordered bhajia and that's what I got for 200 kind of ridiculous so better just coming for the biryani so we started off on the wrong foot this video is meant to be about budget travel and you can't do budget without street food so I asked you guys on Instagram to tell me the best street food places and one of them was this place next to Posta Kalindini which is this guy this guy <laughs> no, I mean that guy. So usually street food snacks would be stuff like Vyazi Karai, Dal Bajia, Samosa, stuff like that. The food is finished. Unfortunately, we got here a little too late. These guys for snack street food usually open at about 3.30. But we did manage to get Dal Bajias, which are 20 shillings for four of them. And you get this chutney. It's a coconut chutney. Oh, oh. That is good. So I kind of forgot to explain what dal bhajia is, but that's what it is. And it's basically lentils that have been like mashed and put together and fried to perfection. Let's go back to the video. We're in the heart of Mombasa town, a place called Market Street. And we're here to buy mabuyus, achari, halwa, and they're also selling like a lot of clothes and stuff. So this here is called achari and it's Fermented mango, Sindhu. Yeah. Mm, kind of sweet, kind of sour. That's so good. So a box like that goes for 50 shillings. And the other thing is mabuyu, which is basically a seed from the baobab tree. Who has the Asante Sana? 
So it's kind of chilly, still kind of sour, powderish, but it's so good. Even that a small box goes for like 50 shillings and a big one for 100. Look at my tongue. <laughs> So for this week's transportation, we're going to be using mostly tuk-tuks because tuk-tuks cost about 100 shillings and you'll find that tuk-tuks are some of the most reasonable ways to get around in Mombasa. The coolest thing about Mombasa is that after 7pm, like every street just comes alive with like street food and it really reminds me of Bangkok, that street food culture is really really rich. The quest for street food continues, we're at this place called Sinia Barbecue which is next to Scoop and Cream just right next to our hostel so uh, I hear that the chicken tikka is a hundred shillings for a piece now if that's true wow that is extremely cheap so the ordering style over here is really different there's no menu but it's kind of like a breakdown of you order these many pieces and you get like this much chips then they basically like discount you on a larger order one two three breasts four breasts five breasts all those chips 500 shillings. How much was that? Like 300 bob. 200 bob. A bunch of chips, chicken tikka, mashkaki, 250 shillings. Now that's called budget. Oh my freaking god. It's chilly and the flavor has gone to the inside. It's so. Oh, that's good. Sugarcane juice for 50 shillings. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. Good morning guys and welcome to day two here in Mombasa. So right now uh, we are going to search for breakfast. One thing to note about Mombasa is that if you want breakfast you have to be up really early. So guys on the streets will usually start at about 6 onwards and the main dish Mahamri and Barazi will usually finish by like I don't know, 8 o'clock. So anyways, we're at this place called Mike's Cafe. It's a small place opposite Kanjoni School and apparently they serve amazing food. So instead of Mahamri and Barazi, we're gonna be having something called Mombasa Mix. Kinda of looks like cereal, but it's actually a mix of chevra and a sort of gravy with chickpeas. So the thing about food in Mombasa is that it's Swahili food and Swahili food has an influence of Indian and Arabian. That's why you'll notice that a lot of these foods have a lot of spices and we love spices. This is called Viazi Karai. It's basically a packed potato. Now the awesome thing about this is they put the chili inside of it, then you mix it up with your coconut chutney and the chili. so good. We're currently walking through the streets of Old Town Mombasa and one thing that you'll notice is that it's very much like Zanzibar or even Lamu. So you have that sort of Arabic Swahili architecture going, the wooden door carvings and even the balconies look super cool. Another thing that you'll notice is that the whole of Mombasa was made to be painted white and blue but Old Town Mombasa is actually different. All the buildings here are either yellow or orange. The buildings are really old and you'll even notice that in the paint, the ripping off of the paint, the broken structures. And one of the things that is really interesting is this behind me. That there is actually one of the first hotels in all of Kenya, 1901. So this place is definitely full of history and if you just go down the road you'll actually get to Fort Jesus. So we're not going there today but there is a lot of history there as well. We're seeing a lot of tourists getting tours from other people so that's also one thing that you can do. I'm not really sure about the price because we haven't done it ourselves. Um, but yeah, if you do get a guide to take you around you'll definitely understand more of the history behind this whole old town. We're just running through restaurants one after the other and right now we're back at this place called Damascus which I really enjoy coming to every time I'm in Mombasa. So we're here to have shawarmas. And I've actually ordered the small one which is 200 shillings and it's basically like chicken and salad put into a naan or a sort of pita bread and it's like topped up with a lot of sauces so really good stuff here. Right next to our hostel here in Old Town Mombasa, there's this place where they serve kahawa which is basically a kind of Mombasa tea and right opposite is that. Beautiful. This here is kahawa, it's 15 shillings, kind of hot. 
Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is freaking unreal. A little bit of ginger, strong tea, nice and sweet. And right behind me down there, there's a bunch of kids who are fishing. They have these small fishing lines and they're just throwing them into the water, hoping to catch fish. Oh my gosh, these vibes, they're so amazing. So I've just made it to Mamangina Street aka Lighthouse and basically over here is where you get all the snacks in the evening and it usually lights up uh, past 5.30 and from once I was a kid this place has changed a lot like if you look behind over here they've beautified it and everyone has moved from the seaside to the land side and uh, yeah over here the, this guy's frying cassava, roasting maize and selling madafu. So you ask them to remove the, well I call it malai, the white stuff that's inside the coconut. Is it soft? It is soft. Is it sweet? Hi, hi, hi. Oh yeah. <laughs> good? And why is it? Mm. That's good. So one of the coolest things that they've done is they've actually set up like a bunch of chairs here so that you can buy your madafu, get your cassava crisps and then just sit and enjoy the view of the sea as you enjoy this. So we found this beautiful location along Mamangina Drive that we're just gonna sit and enjoy the rest of the evening until it's time to go and hunt for food again. Woohoo! <laughs> So we've reserved our final day here in Mombasa for the more adrenaline rushing activities and that's why we've come to Tulia Backpackers here in Nyali. One thing about this Backpackers is that it's actually bigger than the one in Old Town so they actually have a restaurant, bar and a pool. One thing that I will mention though about budget travel here in Mombasa is that it's more of like a you get what you pay for thing. So like the last two nights it was super hot in our rooms. The first place that we stayed at there was no AC and over here the AC was actually busted so we had quite a hard time sleeping how you doing man tired man <laughs> last night was hectic huh <laughs> man well because we didn't wake up early we missed the chance to have mahamri and bazi so like the lazy boys that we are we've come to java which is right across the road from where we're staying and it's more of a safe spot but after all that money that's been saved why not Well, that took a huge dent to the pocket. But anyways, we have come to this place called Wild Waters, which is about a kilometer away from Nyali Backpackers. And uh, this place is freaking awesome. So they've got like these slides and it's just a whole water theme park. And uh, entry per person is 1500 shillings. And you can chill here the whole day and have a lot of fun, which is what we're going to do today. Oh, ho, ho. This is gonna be sick! ended up spending over five hours over here that's a little bit over the time we expected to stay here so I think it's safe to say that this is one of the best things that you can do while you're in Mombasa now when you're here make sure to do the funnel slide because oh my gosh it's the best um, but one thing about it is it's not open at all times so you have to find out when it's actually open or I might just 
put it over here. So we just made our way to English Point Marina where they have this beautiful deck where you can come and sit and watch the sunset. And I just realized I have a lot of sunburns from today. Uh, kind of hurts, so I'm gonna have to go and look for some aloe vera. During the low season, it's actually free to get in, which is good for us because we're on a budget. But um, during high season, you actually have to pay 500 shillings for entry. So now we're just gonna sit here, enjoy our beers, and watch the rest of the sunset. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Final night, final street food here in Mombasa and we're at this place called Remani's which is opposite Nyali Cinemax which was one of uh, the recommendations we got and what they do is they make stuffed chapatis and uh, they stuff it with one of three things that could be eggs, keema, that's mutton or paneer. So it's actually served with chilies and salad and all this is for, well, one is for 300 shillings. So I ordered the one that has mutton and we ordered the one that has egg and paneer. So let's try this out. Huh? <coughs> Spicy from that sauce and it is really good. It's crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside. Oh my god. Oh, hi, hi. <laughs> oh, so good. What do you think? I don't usually ask Jasper because he doesn't speak much. I hope that changes soon. Remani's was definitely a 10 out of 10, but before we leave Mombasa, we decided to come back to Sinia Barbecue to get a last taste of their chicken tikka because it's so. Mwah. Oh! Oh my god! Wow. And that guys concludes an amazing three days here in Mombasa, traveling on a budget and I hope you guys got a few ideas from this, especially from the street food. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and if you're new here, consider subscribing and until then I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Fan of the day.